Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this week's webisode. Every week I bring in a new business to help share tips and ideas within their industry. And today I have Dov, and Dov, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Yeah. Why don't you explain the, to the viewers a little bit a little bit about yourself and what you do? All right. Well, my name is Dov Evans, and I am a speaker and trainer with Keen Advisors, which is my own business. And what I do with my business is I help individuals work on their leadership skills, and I help them become more effective and efficient at what they do. Okay. So why don't you explain to us why is it so important uh, to improve your leadership capabilities? Oh, that's a great question. I think there's a lot of people out there that always ask me, you know, how can I become a more effective leader? So, of course, there's several reasons why you want to become a better leader, but just a few of them is, number one, you want to be more efficient and effective. Of course, as a leader, you want to make sure that you're able to work with your team, you're able to get things done wherever you work, whether you work for someone or whether you have your own business. And of course, if you're not as effective as you want to be, then you start to feel like you're failing as a leader. Another great positive to actually becoming a better leader is of course, you want to make sure that you are more productive. If you're not really productive as a leader, then your team can start to doubt you. You may even start to doubt yourself. So of course, becoming a more productive leader is going to be a huge bonus. And then of course, you want to work on your leadership skills because not, not only that, you can also make sure that you as a leader have less conflict with your team and within your organization. I think we all know that sometimes as a leader, you may uh, experience some type of conflict with your organization and with your team. And of course, if you work on your leadership skills, that can really help you decrease that conflict and mitigate some of those circumstances that can stop you from being productive as a leader and as an organization as well. Okay. Very good. So what are some common myths about uh, leadership? Wow. Well, there's so many myths, uh, you know, when it comes to leadership. But just a couple, uh, for example, is one myth is, you know, if you're a great leader, you need to be in the spotlight. And of course, that's a huge myth as well. If you're a great leader, number one, it's not always about you. You really want your result and what you do to be in the spotlight. That's going to be the huge thing that'll really highlight you as a leader. And not only that, if you're going to highlight anyone, you should be highlighting your teammates. Of course, that's going to help your teammates be more productive. It's going to help them be more positive about themselves and their worth to the company and to the organization. And of course, by doing that, that'll speak highly of you as a leader in and of itself. And another really huge myth is that leaders always have all the answers. And I think you and I know that we don't always have all the answers regardless of what your position is. But what leaders should be good with is really understanding where their shortcomings are as a leader and as an individual. And when you know that, it'll really allow you to identify different opportunities with your team and different resources. So you can use that to really capitalize on some of your weak, on some of your weak points and your shortcomings. And in doing so, that's going to help you become a, a stronger leader. And even though you won't have all the answers, it'll make it look like you have all the answers. Okay. So with that being said, what are some ways um, that uh that people can become better leaders? Well, well, again, there's a lot of different ways people can actually work on their leadership skills and develop more as an individual and leader. But a couple things is, number one, you can always do a personality assessment. See, a personality assessment will really allow you to understand who you are and, of course, what you're really great at and what you're not so great at. Uh, when things get really chaotic and there's a lot of chaos going on in the office, people are going to tend to retreat to uh, what's, what's comfortable to them. Right? And of course, that's when the personality is really going to show. So when you know what type of person you are, you'll know how you handle things, where your strengths are, and where your weaknesses are as well. One personality assessment that I really like is the true colors assessment. It really gives you a good idea of who you are as a person and how you handle conflict when things really get tight. And having that knowledge can be really invaluable to anybody as a leader. Okay. Oh, and there's, I'm sorry, and there's, a, there's a couple others as well. If you think about, uh, if you really want to make sure you want to be more effective as a leader, you can also know who your team is, right? You want to know who actually works under you. Uh, the people under you are people. They're just that. They're people. And of course, they have strengths, they have weaknesses, and they have goals. So the more you know your staff and the more you know your team, the better you can be as a leader, and it can help you be more effective and more productive, like I spoke about earlier. Very good. Well, fantastic information. Great. And uh, any of you out there that are interested in becoming a leader, uh, Dolph is the guy to go to. And if you would like to continue this conversation online, please fill in the comment uh, box below this video or check out his website for more information. That's all we have for this week. Until next time, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.